Hi guys, welcome back. Got a lot to tell you about, a lot going on this week. Now I know I haven't done videos, but that doesn't mean I wasn't working towards the higher goal. I finally finished the color selections for Andy and I promised you I was going to reveal everything to you except for what the barrel design was going to be. So we already know that the pencils that we are developing are going to be round. I made my colored selections completely by what you guys uh, requested. I was very surprised. Did you, did you guys know the number one requested color was Periwinkle? That surprised me. Here we have Periwinkle. I did include Periwinkle colors. If you're already in love with Periwinkle, you don't need another Periwinkle. You've got Periwinkle. So I did pick out Periwinkle colors. We have the 83, which is periwinkle, but slightly lighter. This has a little bit of white in it. And we have one over here, which is the closest match to it. It's not as dark as this one. This has gray in it. This has a little bit of whiter. It's a whiter periwinkle. But when you put this periwinkle with this periwinkle and that periwinkle, you are going to have a beautiful blend. So keep in mind, that's how I am choosing the colors. I don't want to repeat other sets. Nobody needs that. We want to enhance your color palettes. We want to make more. So I'm going to talk about the, um, the colors, and I'm going to talk about the names today. And then we're going to go into where we're going with this and when. Another color that everybody was worried about, make sure that you get this one right, it was red mid-tone red now up here where it starts the analytic um the analog colors i have a pinky red over here which is a change of color i i'm not doing this middle color i'm doing towards the end around this is an orange red you can see it on the outer edges of it but over here i have two reds now this red is almost dead center it's not a violet red. It's not a orange red. It sits right in the middle. That's your rose. That's your fire, your red, your heart. On Valentine's Day, you're going to get it right there. But right next to it, if your eyes are playing games with you or you need a little bit more of an orangey red, I included the next orangey color. And that was... Up here, it's chilly. These are being switched now. So it's going to be that red and this red that are really your middle colors. Now, the next group of colors that everybody was really worried about, and you guys really like your purples. Make sure you're doing your purples. I really love my purples. And I think I got the entire gamut of purples. Now, there was one person that did comment they wanted a little bit more of a redder fuchsia. That they see the blues, the um, blue violets, but they didn't see enough red violets. Now, right here, you can't get any more fuchsia-like. I matched this up with the, with the plant. And we have this one. And I gave you a slightly lighter hot, hot pink that's right next to it. And... When these two blend together, you got it going on. And these will blend nicely into the jeweled. This has a little bit more of a blue, but it has a lot of red in it too. And then we have going into your pinks. So you would add this hot pink right to the end of that. This trio is going to be gorgeous. You're going to really get your flowers going with that. So I'm going to go over some of the names. Now, a lot of you um, put in, I mean, I had like 600 comments altogether when it came to names and what you guys wanted in this set. I couldn't pick everybody's grandchild's name, but I got a couple of good ones that I think everybody's going to like. So they're going to go in order. We've got... Rose Red Pink, Mystique, Mystique Pink. Now, everybody wanted Vanity. 
Vanity Pink. We have Strawberry, Tiger Lily, Coral Salmon, Chili, Georgia Peach, Peach Orange, which is this upper color. I took away that color. Creamsicle. Tawny Mango Marigold. Now these are analogous. These three are analogous of each other. Even though one is over here and one is over there. One is with the um, red oranges and this is the oranges. Um, it doesn't matter. It's still analogous. So you can go from the darker, use this middle and then lighter. Or you can use this as the darker, middle, and then light. Beautiful combinations. They really work. So the next one we have apricot cantaloupe. These are very similar, but this is a slightly lighter version. You can actually see that it's a lot lighter. So really, this whole grouping is going to just flow into each other. Yellow okra, egg yolk, maize, canary yellow, cheap blonde, not quite white, okay? We're not doing white in this set. Uh, we did slightly off-white, and at least you could see this, and you can really see it against the white paper. So I named it not quite white. Grasshopper, Easter grass, lemon chartreuse, and now I had a whole bunch of people who told me, you got to put a lorry green. So I did. <laughs> I have, this is lorry green. Uh, spring leaf, apple green, winter green. I think this, this is beautiful. This is very close to malachite. I don't know if it used to be named malachite and I took it out. That's what I think may have happened. I took out the malachite name. This is one of my favorite colors in the whole group. It's not completely blue. It's not completely green. It sits right in the middle. And even though it's under the greens, it's on the bluer side. And it's one of my favorite colors. I could do a lot with that. Winter green, alien green, pale sage, blue melody. I love this color. Aquamarine. Blue Mint. This reminded me of a candy that my grandmother used to give me when I was a kid. A hard candy. Everybody's grandmother gave you a hard candy when you were a kid. Um, but they used to be very minty blue. Almost like Jolly Ranchers. But I was only able to eat it for like 10 seconds before it overpowered me. So this was a little bit nostalgic for me. Galaxy Blue. Pacific Blue. Aquaman. Blue Whale, this is another color that I absolutely love. Now, it's actually the darker area in there is the color. This, I knew, this is my swatch sheet, which I'm going to do another one to make it neater and everything. So I knew that I had added this onto here, and then I put the blue on it because I screwed it up. But I discovered... What a gorgeous color uh, this and this make together. And that's this color. Just beautiful. These two are going to blend like gorgeous. This is the lightest blue that they had. And it annoys me too. I wish they had one shade lighter. But I guess you can add a little white to this. And you get it. So this is the lightest blue I can get. A couple of people were worried about those cloud colors. And... I will be giving you the combinations for um, to create other colors in this set and show you how to do it. Um, so this is the lightest blue, and I named it Baby Blue. And this is Blueberry Blue, Deep Ocean Blue, Frozen. Guess how I got that one. <laughs> Nova Purple, Lilac Heather, Sea Fog. Now, this happens to be a Pantone color. So I didn't make up the name Sea Fog. That's the color of that Pantone who makes all the colors in the world and for paints and, and sets the standard. They named this color Sea, um, sea Fog. So I included that. Violet, Plum, 
Wisteria, Boysenberry, Magenta, Mauve, Razzleberry, Garnet, Pink Fuchsia. So you have, remember this, this, and this is all really the same color, but with varying degrees of it being muted, which is adding the gray. So we've got a nice selection. Ladybug, carrot orange, which is actually going to be the middle color in here, which will be down there. Sunshine Dawn. Now, I hope you guys are recognizing these names because a lot of you gave me these names. And we have just plain old green right in the middle. Blue. This is like a navy blue, and I know that somebody did re um, request a navy blue. That's where you'll get the navy blue. Mid-violet. So this and violet, this is a lighter version of it. So it's hard to tell in the picture. Um, because I'm filming it and my lighting, but you'll be able to see that in person. A lot of these, remember, are going to be analogous of each other. The same color, but a varying degree of um, tone in it. Red wine, golden butterscotch, which is really a goldenrod. Um, jewel purple, princess purple, hemlock, blue cotton candy, Sophia Pink, that's somebody's grandchild, but I love the name Sophia, and that's just, a, like, that just screams little girl at me, the name Sophia. So I'm sorry I only picked one of your granddaughters, and you'll have to explain to the other ones, or maybe just keep that one a little bit secret and under wraps, but we have a Sophia, and we have a Destiny. This was another one, somebody's grandchild, um, but they have the same thing like Blue Melody, their names really give you the picture in your mind of what it is. Himalayan pink, which this reminds me of my Himalayan salt lamp. So that's why I named it Himalayan. Vintage vermilion, lox, candlelight, because this is a really good ca uh, candle color. Pickle, which is the perfect color pickle. Then we have jade, avocado, Green Okra, Midnight, Brigantine, Early Morning Sky, Cerulean, Agilin Teal, Outrage, Cornflower, Royal Purple, Gray Violet, Midsummer Pink, because this reminds me of the flowers that grew in my yard about midsummer that would bloom. Pink Cotton Candy, Ralia Pink, Baby Kisses, which is very similar to this one, with this one being slightly darker. This is a little bit lighter. We have Flesh, Peach, Light Peach, Palomino, um, somebody, one of my followers gave me that name and it did remind me of a horse, like a beige, beautiful horse in a field. And I would definitely see this color in there. Okay. Coffee cream, yellow peach, Sienna Brown, um, Sienna Brown light. Now this is another color I screwed up, but it was good because I discovered a good combination here. This is beige on the outside, but I accidentally put this color in this square and I tried to erase it. So if you mix the beige with, this is barbecue, which is another name you guys gave me. You get this mauvey pink, which I thought was such a pretty color and it doesn't appear anywhere in there. So this is a great combination. Terracotta which I did a brown terracotta. Prismacolor has a redder terracotta, but a lot of the terracotta pots that I've seen are a little bit more brown. Good Earth, Tree Bark. And then I switched out this because I really felt that this color and this color were basically the same, so close, so like too close. And I needed a place to put um, burnt okra because, oh God, I 
didn't have that in there and we cannot survive without this color. So this is your orangey brown, which is really important. And this would look great going in with this color. You can do a really nice landscape. Now the skin tones, I have all my browns in one area and those are landscape. Now we have color corrections. This is in the skin tone area. And I gave you a whole bunch of extras in the skin tone area that go with the skin con tones. These are your four correction pencils and then your indigo. Indigo goes with, if you have a reddish complexion, you shadow with indigo. And that's why I put it in with the skin so you guys would not forget. Um, it looks beautiful, a reddish undertone skin. Now this is another one that I had changed up, sepia because I had forgotten sepia and there's a color underneath that was so close to this color that when I looked at it, that's another time after that. So it's not as dark. You could see on the outline that the pencil itself is much darker. It was just going over a lighter pencil. It made it lighter. So we've got um, our sepia. Now you do know sepia is brown and black mix. This is a little bit lighter than the sepia than you would get in Prismacolor. But then again, I don't want to copy Prismacolor. I want to enhance it. Okay, and then we have our grays. I have, I try to give you all the grays I could. Um, we've got the four French grays, which is good because those are the browner grays. You use that a lot when you're shadowing. Now, they didn't have as much warm gray. And we have warm gray, warm gray, and a third warm gray. I have black, I've got a blue gray, and then a green gray. I really didn't want to take any of these away because they're the, really the darker, but they're slightly different and they're going to give your colors a different tone. So I really thought that the, I didn't have much to work with, so I gave you as much as I could. So you do have the blue gray and that's the lighter gray and you can mix the grays together. So you can use this with this and do a progression that way. So I was really happy with that. I hope you guys like the names I picked out. I know I didn't get everybody's requests and I just try to get as many people as I could. And again, the colors also I did, um, I took in everybody's suggestions. Now, there was a couple of other things that we did add on that you guys were concerned that I did include. Now, just to make this perfectly clear, the writing on the pencils are going to be very clear, bold, not foiled, and easy to read. That's as important to me as it is to everybody else. I hate the foil that they put on pencils. Who invented that? You can't read it. So we're not doing that. And then a word from Andy. In shipping, okay, when you ship the pencils, when they leave his factory, they're perfect. They, they have quality control and everybody looking at these sets and checking these sets. There's no broken tips. Sometimes in the flight, remember, they've got to go from China all the way to the United States. They get thrown around in Amazon. Then they get mailed to you. He said that the reason why some of the tips got broken in the Starjoy set is he thinks, well, not only because it's a smaller, thinner barrel, but he made the, um, when he sharpened the pencils at the very end, he made those pencils a little bit too long in the tip. This set, the tips are gonna be very small. It's gonna be sharpened, but you know they have like the mini tips, like the mini ones, and then they have like long ones. He's gonna be using the small, um, and he's not gonna do such a long one, and that's gonna help um, in the fracturing. And not only that, the barrel size, the core size on this is uh, night and day. It's this is a big bar. This is a big core pencil. This is up there with with um, Polychromos. He's doing a three eight. He was going to do his three seven, but then when he talked to the manufacturer, they were like, "Well, you could still do a three eight. Three eight is plenty big." 
So I'm really happy about that. As far as also pencil, um, this is going to be the barrels. This is the wood for the barrels. He glues, he puts a layer of glue on this and he actually glues the, uh, the cores into the barrel, which is also going to help protect it from breaking. The only thing I am concerned about, and this is a, a good reason to be concerned, because remember, we're dealing with what we can get in China. The paint, I believe, is probably predestined by the manufacturer that makes the cores. Andy is not a core man manufacturer. Remember, we went over the different types of manufacturing um, plants that are in and available in China. One makes the products to make the products, and one company does makes the product. So the people who create the cores sell the cores to people like Andy who make the pencils. And the paint is probably predetermined by the manufacturer that does the cores. They give him. I'm crossing my fingers it's going to match, but if it's not perfect, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and preach to you, oh, it's going to be perfect because there's a long history with Chinese pencils that their uh, paints do not match their cores. I'm going to be including a swatch sheet. Not this one, but something that you guys are going to be able to swatch and have a, a swatch of every color and it's going to be clearly marked set is going to be very very user friendly the colors have been given to andy the names of the colors have been given to andy now he, it's up to him he said the next step is that um he's going to make samples crossing my fingers on the samples i have Full confidence in him. He put out a beautiful set last time. What do we do now? We've done the pencils. There's nothing more that I can do. Where do we go from now? And that's what we're going to talk about in the next part of this video. I'm happy to say this week we were able to get the swatch and comp papers done. Kim did a great job checking me and I'm giving it to Abby. Abby's really quick about things. The swatch and comps are going to be up next week. So I think my next video is going to be a demo for Color It. And I did a full picture demo to them of one of their new, from their new book, Jungle. This picture took me a month to do. Oil pencils do not, are not fast. They're very slow when you're doing it properly. They take a long time. So I really threw myself into this picture. I worked on it for a full month and that demo is going to go out. I did it all in one video. It's not a follow along. It's meant to show you what you can do. Starting next week, the paperwork for the second class is going to be in my Etsy shop. I will go over what I'm giving you guys. You're going to be getting the actual picture, a black and white of what the picture should be, and I'm giving you your reference picture. Everybody's going to be working out of the same reference picture and the sketch. The lessons are going to be public, but the paperwork is very important because to follow along and to do what I'm doing and to see what I'm doing that's where you bring in your, your paperwork. This course is going to be less money than the last one. The last one was $20. What I'm going to do next week is I'm going to put the last class on sale because the last class that I did dealt with lighting. This course is different. This course is going to be all on recognizing color hues and how to use them properly and how to do transitions with um, oil colors because it's different than prism colors and wax pencils. It's way different. Going in a whole new direction. Do you need class two, uh, the first class comprehensive uh, coloring one? It's a good idea that you at least have watched the private videos that I put out on lighting. In this course, we're not dealing so much with lighting because the lighting is going to be fixed. It's already going to be given to you where you're going to put your lights and darks. 
this one is going to be how to get your colors to do what you want them to do and things that you need to um, include in pictures to make your pictures look a little bit more realistic. So that's all coming up. The classes are going to be one every two weeks. There'll be other classes in between with just lessons, but moving completely forward in the pictures are going to be every other week because oil pencils take time. It is the slowest medium out there. If you get an inch or two inches done in a night when you're doing this correctly, you've made progress on your pictures. But even though it is so much slower, you're going to have a much greater comprehension of how to use these pencils. If it was up to me, wax pencils and oil pencils would be considered two different mediums. It's all under colored pencils. But they react so different and you use them so differently. You, It's like pastel pencils or do not react like wax pencils and watercolor pencils. It, they're pencils, but like a tuba and a flute are instruments. Do you play them the same? No, it's the same kind of concept. And I'm going to be presenting all of that. So we're going to be getting much more into art lessons uh, coming up by next week. More than likely starting on Monday after I release the Color It video. We're going to be doing one on how to, how to recognize undertones. And that really is the beginning of using oil pencils. Is We're going to learn about the undertones of each pencil. So... I'm looking forward to this. It's a new experience, a new journey, and I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.